equipotential surfaces. Equipotential surface. Whenever the charge is there, there is a electric field. The strength of the electric field can be explained through electric lines of forces. From point to point, the field strength, how it will be changed? It can be explained through electric lines of forces, electric flux. Now, in the same electric field, at every point, we can define the potential. From point to point, how the electric potential is going to be changed? The change in potential, the variation in potential due to the distance can be explained through an imaginary surfaces. Those imaginary surfaces are called equipotential surfaces. Right? In the light, we can define wave fronts. The wave fronts in the light are similar to the equipotential surfaces in the electricity. In the light, the propagation of the light ray, the propagation of the wave can be explained through the wave fronts. Similarly, in the electric field, the variation of the potential from point to point that can be explained through a surfaces. Those surfaces are called equipotential surfaces. Now, what is the definition of equipotential surfaces? In the name itself, equipotential surface. In the electric field, imagine a surface on which at every point the potential is same, then such a surface is called equipotential surface. The surface in the electric field, at every point the potential is same, then that surface is said to be equipotential surface. Or otherwise, the locus of all points at which the potential is same in the electric field is called equipotential surface. Now, let us consider there is a point charge. This is the point charge. Right? Point charge. Now, this is the point charge. Right? At a distance of R, what is the potential V? V is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R. Now, here at a distance of R, what is the potential? Same. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R. Next, at a distance of R, what is the potential? V is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q by R. Let us consider at every point, these are the points. The potential is said to be same. Now, at every point, the potential is same. The locus of all points, connect all the points, the locus of all points, at which the potential is same, then that is called equipotential surface. Now, imagine another, another surface. This is the another surface. Right? On the surface, at this point, what is the potential? V1. At this point, what is the potential? V1. At this point, what is the potential? V1. Right? The locus of all points on which the potential is same is called equipotential surface. Now, with respect to the point charge, with respect to the point charge, the equipotential surfaces are concentric spheres. Contra concentric spheres. Right. Let us consider. If the charge is at infinity, at infinite charge, 
with respect to the infinite charge right equipotential surfaces equipotential surfaces are or to say plane these are the equipotential surfaces now let us consider right equatorial line equatorial line of electric dipole now already we know that this is the positive charge now this is the negative charge which are separated by a fixed distance that is called 2a now this line is called what to say axial line this line is called equatorial line right on the equatorial line right that is there is a with respect to the positive charge there is a positive turn potential with respect to the negative charge there is a negative potential therefore the total potential is said to be zero here the potential is zero here the potential is zero here the potential is zero therefore on the equatorial line of the electric dipole at every point the potential is zero therefore the equatorial line of electric dipole is the equipotential surface now once again what is the equipotential surface the surface in the electric field on which the potential is same at every point is called equipotential surface the locus of all points at which the potential is same is also known as equipotential surface right now what are the equipotential surfaces in the case of point charge in the case of point charge equipotential surfaces are concentric spheres of different radii now there is a sphere at the center there is a charge on on the sphere at every point the potential is same therefore this sphere is called equipotential surface consider another sphere the potential is said to be v1 or v1 here the potential on the first sphere is different from the potential on the second sphere but as you go on taking the first sphere the potential is same v as you go on taking the second sphere the potential is said to be v1 now on the different spheres the potentials are different on a particular sphere at every point the potential is same now if the charge is at infinity the equipotential surfaces are what to say that is plane surfaces now the another example of equipotential surface let us consider an electric dipole in the electric dipole there is an axial line there is a perpendicular bisector line on the perpendicular bisector line at any point the potential is zero therefore equatorial line of a electric dipole is an equipotential surface what are the properties of equipotential surface properties of equipotential surface now this is called an equipotential surface equipotential surface right there is a point what is the potential v there is a point what is the potential say v now let us consider a now b right suppose a test charge q not is moving from a to b right therefore what is the first property a test charge is moving from a to b what is the work done now here potential difference vf minus vi is equals to w by q not therefore w by q not is equals to vf minus vi therefore w by q not is equals to what is the final potential final potential is v now what is the initial potential v therefore w is equals to zero therefore the work done by the test charge in moving between any two points in the electric 
a equipotential surface is equals to zero. Therefore, on the equipotential surface, in moving a test charge between any two points, the work done is zero. Why? Because on the equipotential surface, the potential difference is said to be zero. Second one. Now let us consider for uniform electric field. This is the uniform electric field. These are called right uniform electric field. For the uniform electric field, E bar. Now these are called what to say equipotential surface. These are called equipotential surface. Equipotential. Right along the surface, what is the potential? V1. Along this surface, what is the potential? V2. Along the surface, what is the potential? V3. Now, equipotential surfaces are perpendicular to the electric field intensity. Right? This equipotential surfaces are perpendicular to the electric field. This is true in the case of uniform electric field as well as non-uniform electric field. Now, in the diagram, this is a uniform electric field. In the uniform electric field, the equipotential surfaces are perpendicular. Third one. Right. We know that equipotential surfaces never intersect. Right? Already in the previous topic we discussed there is electric field, electric lines of forces. As the electric lines of forces never intersect, similarly, equipotential surfaces never intersect. Equipotential surfaces. Equipotential surfaces. Equipotential surfaces never intersect. never intersect now now fourth one now this is called what to say electric field intensity electric field intensity is a vector quantity now suppose the electric field intensity e bar is like this right now with respect to the particular direction this is making an angle theta now this electric field intensity is resolved into two components E cos theta and E sin theta. Electric field is resolved into two components E cos theta and E sin theta. Now E cos theta is known as horizontal component of electric field and E sin theta is known as vertical component of the electric field. Now there is an electric field, right? This is inclined electric field. Now, this is called horizontal electric field. As the electric field is a horizontal direction, right? The electric field has no component in the direction of equipotential surface, right? Electric field is perpendicular to the equipotential surfaces. Right? Here there is a horizontal component, there is a vertical component. Now in this case, this electric field, right? it is not an inclined electric field. Now this is called horizontal field. Right? Whenever it is horizontal, there is no vertical component. There is no vertical component means electric field has no component of field intensity along the equipotential surface. Now, therefore, along the equipotential surface, along the equipotential surface, equipotential surface, right? Component of electric field intensity, component of electric field intensity is equals to zero. Now, these are called the properties of equipotential potential surfaces.